we're gonna talk about the idea of keeping the texture, keeping it looking natural. I see a lot of people where they kind of, you know, run blurring filters and they over soften things to the point where the defining features like the, you know, the cheekbones, the jawline, kind of rounding that out or softening the texture to the point where you get that kind of waxy, almost like a um, plastic Barbie doll sort of look. And I find a lot of people are kind of looking around at each other's Instagrams and like other kind of, you know, student retouchers and stuff and seeing where they've kind of blurred something. So it's a little bit kind of overly softened going, I can do better. And then they'll overly blur blur theirs even more, and it kind of gets into this kind of echo chamber where everybody looks at each other's over-blurred stuff. Instead, look at flare, shadowing, vogue, things like that. See what kind of retouching is done in the commercial world. Uh, that being said, uh, let's go over some of these techniques that can be used to quickly and relatively well soften. You know, it'd be great for bridal parties, the bride will be thrilled. Um, you do it for the editor of Vogue, they may not be quite as thrilled. But let's go through some of those techniques. Um, in the folder today, You'll see there's a folder in there called retouching. You're like, hey, retouching, we went over that. But this is the quick and easy retouching, the quick and dirty retouching. And you'll notice there's a handout in there. We're only gonna do the first two here. We're gonna do the surface blur and the high pass. And you'll notice at the very top, it starts with, let's start with the skin. Before starting any of the following techniques, be sure to remove the larger, more obvious blemishes to ensure they don't affect the final image. I also see a lot of people when they're gonna be doing like a, you know, a surface blur or you know, some kind of like frequency separation, they leave in like you know, zits, blemishes, dark patches, and those get blurred into the final image. If you do a blur, something that's fairly small and dark suddenly becomes lighter, but larger. So before you do any of these kind of quick and easy techniques, zoom in, get a clone stamp, spec out the little more obvious blemishes, okay? And oftentimes, if you spend a little bit of time doing that, you might realize that's kind of all the image needed. But there could be other things that you wanna just kind of do an overall softening, and that's what we're gonna take a look at today. Okay, pop into the folder called retouching, and we're gonna start with the surface blur one. So it says remove any of the larger, more obvious blemishes. These images have already had them removed. Um, and it also says, the first two techniques use the surface blur and high pass filters to achieve a smoother skin tone while leaving fine skin texture intact. That's the important part right there, keeping that fine skin texture. The other important part is follow these steps, modifying settings as necessary to suit the image you're using. So when you see values in here, like you know, radius of 36, threshold of 30, they'll be different for your own images. Those are specific for the image that's in the folder. So there's an image in there called surface blur. And that's what I kind of figured was appropriate for that image. If you're doing something that is lower resolution, or let's say it's like a bridal party and there's like you know, eight people in it, so each face is only like this big in the frame. Well, the radius, the radii, radiuses, anyway, will probably be smaller. If you're doing a tight face portrait done with like a you know, 100 megapixel Hasselblad camera that's like you know, 5 million pixels high, you'll probably be using a larger radius. So we'll talk about radius, we'll talk about threshold and why these different settings are appropriate. So let's start with the first one called surface blur. Now, if you pop into the folder, you'll find a picture called, oh, look at that, surface blur. Let's call that one up. Now this one's kind of a close-up. This is actually a crop of a much larger image. It's not super high resolution. It's only 1,300 pixels high. So again, this is why the radiuses, radii, will change depending on the image that you're working on. So call it up, and let's take a look at this image here. You'll see that there's skin texture. Do models have perfectly smooth skin with no texture, no fine lines, no wrinkles? No, every human has skin texture. And it's important to retain that. But you'll notice that you know, there's kind of like a, a dark shadow under the eye here. There's kind of a dark line beside the nose there. Um, you know, just kind of some overall softening could be done. Well, let's take a look at that surface blur filter. I'm gonna duplicate the layer. So pretend this is the layer you've done all your retouching on. You've spotted out all the major blemishes and stuff. So we'll duplicate that layer, or just a Command J will do the same thing. And let's go under Filter, Blur, Surface Blur. Let's talk about how this filter works. You got two sliders here, Radius and Threshold. The Threshold is basically you know, how much difference does there have to be uh, on either side of a contrasting edge for the filter to say, ooh, it's, it's an edge, I'll leave it alone. And in this case, with a Threshold of two, well, pretty much every pixel around here has at least two levels of difference from that zero to 255 grayscale range. So it says, well, that, that's an edge, that's a contrasting edge, we'll leave it alone. This filter tries to blur areas of lower contrast. So things like skin, you know, backgrounds, if you have a bit of noise in the sky, it'll try to blur those lower contrast areas while leaving alone higher contrast areas. Now, does that sound familiar? Is there something out there that will try to sharpen or enhance high contrast edges while leaving smoother areas alone? 
the unsharp mask filter. This is, in a way, kind of the opposite of the unsharp mask. Um, instead of enhancing the contrast or sharpening areas of fine detail, it's going to soften areas of lower contrast. And with a threshold of two, it basically does nothing. As you bring that threshold up, if you get it to like 255, well, everything is within you know, zero to 255, so it blurs everything. So by bringing this threshold down, you can limit it off the higher contrast areas, off the eyes, off the face, you know, the, the jewelry, the lips, and stuff like that. Now the radius, this is the important one here. Take a look at what happens if I put this radius too small. Well, it's softening the skin out, sure, but remember the problems we were talking about was, you know, this shadow under the eye here, this little line beside the nose. I still see them. If I bring the radius up larger, watch what happens. Here we are at 15, still there. 22, yeah, starting to disappear. At around 30, 35, look at that. That line under the eye has kind of been softened out. The line beside the nose has kind of been softened out. Now, obviously, everything has been over softened, but we will deal with that. All right. So the 35 seems to be the point where the problem areas start to disappear. But look at what remains. We still see the cheekbone. We still see the jawline. We still see the definition in the face. Look at what happens if we start bringing that radius too high. Here we are at 50 pixels, 60 pixels, 80 pixels. Notice that the jawline, the cheekbones, they're starting to round out. It's almost like she's getting inflated. The shadows are what are defining the contours of the face. So it's a little bit lighter here, darker down here, and we can tell this is tilted towards the light, this is tilted away from the light. We're getting the shape, the contours of it. If we go too large, we start to lose the definition between the jawline and the cheekbone. Everything kind of rounds out. She's starting to look like an orange. Um, so you want to keep that radius low enough to retain the facial features, you know, the things that you want to keep, but high enough to blur out the things you want to get rid of. When it looks like it's doing a good job in those areas, we're going to hit OK, and we're ready to send it off to the client. What do you think? Are we done? Sadly, you see some stuff like this. No, we want to limit this just to specific areas. And geez, look at that. There's barely any skin texture left. Well, we'll deal with the skin texture later. For now, let's limit this softening effect only to the skin areas. How could we do that? How could we get rid of it off these areas? Could we use an eraser tool and simply erase it? Do that? Or would that be exceptionally bad? We want to hide it, don't we? How can we hide pixels but leave them there so we can use them if we need to? We could use a layer mask. We could throw a layer mask onto it. OK, um, let's give it a layer mask. And what do we have to do to flip that around to a hide all layer mask? We have to do a command I, don't we? And that's going to take at least a quarter of a second of your time. What if I held down the option key when I clicked on the new layer mask icon? Kaboom, instant hide all. That saves a quarter of a second of time, which again, doesn't seem like much. But you add that up over a career, and that becomes a significant amount. Let's bring back that over-softened effect just in the areas of skin. So let's grab a paintbrush. We're going to work on a layer mask, so make sure you have pure black and pure white. What's the keyboard shortcut to get pure black and pure white? D for your default colors, and then X can switch them back and forth if you need. All right, so I'm going to grab some white paint. I want 100% opacity. What's the keyboard shortcut for 100% opacity? Zero. Hit zero on the keyboard. There's your 100%. And then we'll start bringing back that over-softened effect. Just in the skin areas, stay away from eyes, nostrils, you know, areas of high contrast. Just bring that back on the skin. And again, it's going to look overdone. That's OK. We're going to deal with that in a while. Now, sometimes when you're working on a layer mask, it may not be obvious where you've painted and where you haven't, especially with this, where it's kind of similar to the original. What's a way that we could actually see that layer mask for what it is? Like, if you look at it in the layers panel here, it's a, it was a black mask, and then we painted white on it. How could I see it over here as black and white? Option, click on the layer mask. That makes it visible. You can see if you missed anything. And yes, clearly I have missed some things. Um, it's a good way to go in and see if there's anything that you, you didn't quite get. So I can just paint over top of those things there. Another way of seeing your layer mask, if you do the backslash key right below the delete key, it'll put a red mask over top. Anything that is white will show up as clear. Anything that is black will show up as red, which often works pretty good. Sometimes, though, on skin, it can be a little tough to see where the red is, um, in which case, option clicking, it becomes pretty obvious where your problem areas are. All right. And you'll end up with kind of a creepy-looking layer mask. Is that entirely convincing-looking, or 
It's a little overdone, isn't it? Let's talk about how we can get back this skin texture. Take a look on the screen for a second. Here's where we're at. We've lost that, you know, the line under here, the, the, the dark line by the nose there. It's all nice and softened out. But the small details, the skin pores, the texture, the, the stuff that makes her human is pretty much gone. Let's see if we can bring that back. What do you guys know about frequency in images? What is frequency? Well, what's frequency when we're talking about audio stuff? It's like if we look at this image here, you'll notice if we zoom in, we have you know, a dark patch back here. We have, it's a little bit lighter and then darker and then lighter and then darker, lighter, darker, lighter, darker. And there's a certain frequency to it. When you're talking about audio stuff, if you've ever zoomed in on like an audio timeline, you'll see the waveform, which is high frequency would be like, you know, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, very close together waves. Low frequency along, you know, bass kind of sound would have very long, Long, undulating waves and we're kind of getting that in the image aren't we we have like a long undulating wave dark light dark light dark light dark light across but if we zoom in there's also some higher frequency information isn't there we've got some dark light dark light dark light dark just a few pixels like you know three maybe four pixels across very high frequency information so frequency relates to images just as it does to audio. Now what if we could separate those frequencies somehow? What if we could take high frequency information and low frequency information and deal with them differently? We're not gonna do frequency separation today. Um, we're gonna kinda do like a frequency separation light. But let's talk about this frequency stuff. So we can see that there's frequencies in this image. Have you guys seen this image before? We've got two people, one person is kind of angry and argh, snarly looking, and one person has a fairly passive expression on their face. Which person's angry looking? The person on the left or the person on the right? I would probably say it's this guy over here, because uh, if you look at the high frequency information, you can see the eyebrows angled in, you can see the little wrinkles above the nose there, you can see the, argh, the clenched teeth. And this person, you can see that very neutral kind of expression. The eyes are open, eyebrows are fairly flat. So the high frequency information says this person's angry, this person is fairly neutral. But throw your eyes out of focus, blur it a little bit, cross your eyes or whatever you gotta do. And what happens? They switch, don't they? If we get rid of that high frequency information, and how in Photoshop do you think we could get rid of these small high frequency details? Is there a filter that could destroy them? What if I did, oh, a Gaussian blur filter? There's before and there's after. Huh, they've kind of reversed themselves, haven't they? Here, we're looking at the lower frequency information. So we have light, dark, light, dark, light, very long undulating waves. And this presents a very different scenario. This one here, who do you see? Well, if you look here, I mean, you all know this guy, the wild hair, all that. But if you look here, you see someone else, don't you? Or if you throw your eyes out of focus. Or if I were to Gaussian blur that information away. Okay, that's creepy. Let's go a little higher on the... There we go. You got Marilyn Monroe in there. So the high frequency and the low frequency are sending very different signals. Interesting. How do you think we can take the low frequency and get rid of the high? Like, we'll take a look at this for a second. Uh, let's go back to this guy here. We said that we got, you know, low frequency, dark, light, dark, light, dark, mid-gray. He's got a black jacket on. He's got a white shirt. He's got skin-colored skin, unusual. How could I get rid of this low frequency information but keep all of this really high? We decided that if we did a Gaussian blur, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, we can destroy the high frequency information. Look at that, all that high frequency is gone. He had stubble, he doesn't have stubble anymore. But if I zoom out, he's still dark, light, dark, light, dark, mid gray, still got a black jacket, still got a white shirt, still got skin colored skin. What do you think is the opposite of a Gaussian blur? Let's take a look at a high pass filter. If I hit this with high pass, this image has become mostly gray, but not just gray. It's a very special gray. It's 50% gray. Remember back when we were talking about dodging and burning with the idea of non-destructive stuff? We said, well, what if you made a new transparent layer, popped it into soft light blending mode, and if I wanted to darken something, I could take some black paint and I could darken it down. And it's, you know, it's not going to make it black, it's just going to darken it. And if I took some white paint, I could lighten stuff up. It's not going to make it white, it's just going to lighten it up. But if I painted in 50% gray, or thereabouts, 
absolutely nothing happens. There's before and there's after. Wherever you're painting 50% gray, nothing happens. Interesting. So if I were to hit this image, filter, other, high pass, with say, um, well, let's do a three pixel high pass and hit OK. If I zoom in there, oh, I see the texture in his jacket. I see the texture on his shirt. Actually, I didn't even realize his shirt has a texture. Look at that. Um, it's keeping the high frequency information. Anything three pixels or smaller is still there. Look, there's his stubble, there's the lines in his lips, there's the texture in his jacket. So where the Gaussian blur destroys the high frequency, the high pass keeps it. And where the Gaussian blur keeps the low frequency, it blurs out the fine details and it keeps that, those long undulating waves, the high pass turns it 50% gray, which if you think about it, that's the only way it can destroy it. So if I were to take this and put it from normal to say um, soft light or overlay, here's before and here's after. Hey, look at what's happening here. Where there's an edge, the dark side of the edge is getting a little bit darker, and the light side of the edge is getting a little bit lighter. What does that sound like? What finds edges, darkens the dark side, and lightens the light side? The unsharp mask filter. That's all sharpening is. It's looking for edges and increasing contrast. In fact, some people use the high pass filter for sharpening their images. All right, so we we're able to isolate that high frequency information. Now, how can that help us with her? Well, what if we did the same thing? What if we went back to her original skin texture, duplicated it onto a new layer, but only the area where we've softened it, and ran a high pass filter? Let's give that a try. We want to duplicate her skin texture, which is on the background layer, but we only want to duplicate it where we have revealed that softened effect. That's pretty specific, isn't it? We could do it with a layer mask and stuff. Or what if we had a selection that represents all the areas where we painted with white. Uh, remember um, alpha channels? It sits in the channels panel, it's anything that's not a color channel, and we can load that up as a selection. We can also load a layer mask as a selection. Give this a try. Hold down the command key and click on the layer mask, and look at what happens. We have a selection that represents where we had painted white on that layer mask. Now, we want to get the original skin texture, which is down here on the background layer. So, Click on the background layer, that'll make it active. You can see it's highlighted in a light gray. And what would be a fast way of duplicating all of the selected area onto a new layer? Command J, boink, pops that up onto a new layer. If you don't have an active selection, Command J just duplicates the layer. But if you do have a selection, it duplicates the selected area, which basically gives you this like, really creepy looking meat mask, which has all the skin texture, but nothing else. Now, we're going to use this to bring that texture back. Now, it's hidden right now by our softened layer, so let's grab that meat mask and drag it to the top of the stack, and it looks like we've done absolutely nothing. There's our original texture stuck back over top of everything that we'd softened. Hmm, let's try that high pass. It's ultimately like the pores, the fun. We don't want to bring this back. We don't want to bring this back, but these pores and stuff we do. So let's try that high pass and see if we can isolate just this really high frequency information while ignoring this lower frequency. Let's go under filter, other, high pass, and if I go too large on the radius, like here's a 53 pixel radius, and we're still, you know, it's bringing back that line, it's bringing back that line. We're seeing the shading on the, the cheekbone and stuff. It's, it's kind of creepy, frankly. Uh, if we bring that radius down, though, look at how the visible parts of the image get less and less. And if I take it right down to point 0.1 and I zoom in there, we're going to see ooh, pretty much nothing. If I get it up to, say, one pixel, now we're seeing information that's one pixel or smaller. So, you know, the tiniest bits of the pores. Um, you know, the, some of the fine hairs along the side of the cheek there. Maybe let's try like two, three, four-ish. Remember it was, um, what, around 30 pixels we did that got rid of those lines under the nose. And sure enough, if you get up to around 30 pixels, there's that line back. I'm thinking around three or four. Whatever kind of brings back that skin texture and leaves everything else alone. So let's hit her with four pixels. What the heck? And let's hit OK there. And I think we're ready to send that off to the client. What do you think? I think it needs something else. 
Um, let's play around with some of those blending modes again. Let's try, okay, not that one. Uh, soft light. If we zoom in there, there's before and there's after. So you can see that it's bringing that texture back. And why is it bringing the texture back? Well, as we saw with the dodging and burning, 50% gray does nothing. And for the most part, it's 50% gray. But anything darker than 50% gray will darken the pixels below. Anything lighter than 50% gray will lighten. So look at this. We have some dark bits. The dark parts of the pores are still there. So they're darkening the skin. And the light bits of the pores are lighter than 50% gray. So they're lightening the skin. There's before and there's after. If you think it's a little bit too subtle, you can play around with the blending mode, say soft light to overlay. That's a little bit stronger. There's soft light, there's overlay. Here's hard light. That's maybe a little bit too intense. I'm going to leave it at soft light, actually. I want to keep it fairly subtle there. What do you think? Is that still a little overdone? Yeah, in my mind, that's maybe a little bit too intense. What could we do to ease that off a little bit? Could we just play with the opacity of some of these layers? Like, here's the original image. Here's before and here's after. Before, after. This has a very natural kind of look to the skin, but, you know, these are a little bit intense here. This, I find, is a little bit over softened. So maybe I'll take this layer here. This is the one that's kind of doing that initial softening. Maybe I'll ease its opacity off. And this is where personal preference or what your client wants comes into play, that's a little bit softer. That's a little bit more natural looking. There's before and there's after. And like I said, this isn't something that, you know, you're gonna send off to like Chatelaine or Flair or Vogue. But if you got like, you know, 20, 30 images you gotta work through fairly quickly, it can be pretty fast. I mean, it, it took me a long time to go through it because I was explaining every single step as we went. But take a look on the screen for a second. I'll just go through this in real time. Imagine I, I'd done like a, a photo shoot of like, you know, a bridal stuff and they had a bunch of images that I had to, to do, you know, really quickly stuff. They're gonna put it onto like, you know, sales books, web pages, stuff like that. If I pick out all the major blemishes, shouldn't take too long, a couple minutes. Uh, duplicate the layer, filter blur, surface blur. Play around with the threshold. This isn't all that important. The big one is the radius. Too small, you'll see those little problem areas. Too large, you're gonna lose the detail in the face. So for this one, around 30, 36-ish, I kind of figured worked for this one. Hit OK. Hide it with a layer mask. Grab a paintbrush, bring it back just in the areas of the skin. Du -du 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 -du. I'll do a really quick job here, but you can imagine it wouldn't take too long to run through. Da, 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 da. Option click to see if you missed anything. Hold down the option key. And yes, I did a crap job. Well, let's clean that up a little bit. Do, 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 do. All right. So now she has a very over softened sort of look to it. Well, if I command click on the layer mask, pop back to my background, command J, boink, duplicates that original texture into this charming little meat mask up here. I can then hit that with a filter, other, high pass, and her pores, I'm guessing, oh, four pixels, looks pretty good. You can play around with the radius if you want, but usually once you've got a series of images, that number will pretty much just fall into place. Hit OK, pop it into overlay maybe, a little bit too strong, let's notch that down a little bit, maybe around there, maybe around there. Looks good, let's save that up and send it off. And you're on to the next image. And like I said, if, if it's all kind of from the same photo shoot, a lot of those numbers will be fairly similar as you work your way through. Next, let's take a look at this high pass one. And you're like, wait a minute, we just used high pass. Yes, but we used the high pass to bring the texture back. In the next one, we're gonna use high pass to get rid of the texture. So this one says, again, start by duplicating the background layer and as with anything, be sure to remove the larger, more obvious blemishes to ensure they don't affect. So duplicate the background layer, call up the Gaussian blur in all caps, but do not apply it. All right, let's, let's give that one a try. So let's call it that high pass image. There we go, there she is, hello there. And let's take a look at the problem areas. Skin texture, high, low, high, low. So there's a frequency to it. Um, there's also a frequency to, oh, this little bump on her forehead. And on the chin here, you can see we have like, you know, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. There's kind of a, a ripple texture on the chin there, a little bump on the forehead, maybe some like little freckles. Maybe it's uh, an older uh, client, maybe he doesn't have as much hair as he used to, and maybe he's got some of those, uh, you know, liver spots or age spots on the forehead or on the skin. Um, well, what if we could figure out what the radius of those problem areas was. Well, that's what that Gaussian blur is for. So I've picked out all the major blemishes, just do a command J, duplicate that retouched layer, go under filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we'll use this to figure out the size of those problem areas. At a really small radius, the skin texture's still there, the problem area is still there. Let's bring this up a little bit larger. Two pixels, no, three and a half, I still see the problem areas, the ripples in the chin. Uh, 294, 
It's gone, maybe a little bit too high. Let's notch that down a little bit. Still see it, six, eight, still good. Disappear, nine, oh, you know, oh, around 10 pixels. I see a certain smoothness in the chin. There is a little bit of it remaining, but for the most part, that's pretty smooth. So I'm, I'm thinking that 10 pixel radius should about do it. And it said in all caps, do not apply it. So let's just remember that number, 10 pixels, and let's cancel it. And then it says to run a high pass at that radius. So filter, other, high pass, radius of 10 pixels, hit OK. Now let's look at what we got here. She used to be wearing a black shirt on a beige background with skin colored skin and red hair. She now has a 50% gray shirt on a 50% gray background with 50% gray skin and 50% gray hair. Anything 10 pixels or smaller though is still there. Oh, look at that. We still see the skin texture. Oh, we see the bump on the forehead. And if we zoom in even closer, uh-oh, we see the fine hairs. We see the pores in the skin. We want to get rid of the bump, but we don't want to get rid of the texture. That's kind of the specific thing we don't want to do. So we've eliminated everything 10 pixels or larger. We also want to eliminate anything that would be considered skin texture. So like, I'm guessing that, well, that's obviously one pixel. This looks to be like two or three pixels maybe. This is maybe like three or four pixels. Well, you know what, let's, let's destroy that information. Um, like we said, we could play around with the blending modes now. Like if we did like a, you know, an overlay or soft light, wait a minute, that actually makes it worse. This is like that sharpening filter. Like I said, some people use uh, high pass for sharpening. Okay, and it's sharpening up all that detail down there. We need to destroy the detail. All right, we, we can do this. Um, let's put that back to normal for a second. So this is where we're at. How can we destroy this high frequency information? The high pass destroyed the low frequency, the shirt, the background. How can we destroy this really high frequency? What was the opposite of the high pass? Well, it, in audio processing, it actually is called a low pass filter. But we call it something different in Photoshop. We call it the Gaussian blur. And it destroys the high frequency information. It lets the low frequency information pass. Hence, yeah, the term low pass. Um, so around, you know, maybe like a third the radius that destroyed the, the low frequency, we'll, you know, use that to get rid of the high. So three pixels. If you go too low, too much of that fine detail passes through. Um, if we go too high, not enough passes through. So around like three, four, seems to leave that problem area. If we zoom out, yeah, you can still see the texture in the chin. You can still see the bump on the forehead. You can still see the little bumps on the cheek there, the little freckles and stuff. But the skin texture is gone because we're not trying to remove the skin texture. We want that to stay. All right, well, let's hit her with uh, 3.2 pixels. What the heck? Kaboom! Done. And again, if we put this into the blending modes now, soft light, overlay, hard light, Linear light. Hey, they're all making it worse. There's before, there's after. Uh, let's take a look at why. We have 50% gray, which in those blending modes does nothing. We have stuff that's darker than 50% gray, which darkens the pixels below. And we have stuff that's lighter than 50% gray, which lightens the pixels below. What could we do to make this part lighten and this part darken? Can we get the dark stuff to lighten? What if we were to invert, what's the keyboard shortcut for invert? Command I. We're used to using Command I to take a hide all or a reveal all, a white layer mask, and flip it around to black. Command I inverts, basically it makes a photographic negative of whatever you've got. So in this case, a Command I will make light stuff dark and dark stuff light, 50% gray being right in between from that zero to 255 range, it's here. Everything has inverted. 50% gray stayed right where it was. All right, let's try those different blending modes now. Here's your overlay. It's better. There's before and there's after. You can see it's kind of lightened up the shadows a bit. It's not doing a whole lot to the highlights. Let's kick it up a notch. Let's try linear light. Ooh, look how wonderful the skin looks. Hard light, same kind of deal. I think between hard light and linear light is kind of a toss up. I'm gonna go with hard light. Yeah, look at how smooth that chin is. And look at that, that problem area up above is gone. The skin looks fantastic around here. Are we ready to send that to the client? I, I sense hesitation. Um, is it because the rest of the image looks like crap? 
Yeah, any contrasting edges, uh, you're getting this weird kind of like reverberating effect around it. Um, huh, but those problem areas look great. Is there a way that we could limit this um, skin texture to just the problem areas? Or what if we gave it a layer mask? Or remember the keyboard shortcut to give it a hide all? If you hold the option key and click on the new layer mask icon, kaboom, it gives you a hide all. And this is my favorite part. Take a look on the screen for a second. Do you see the problem on her forehead? Boom, no you don't, because it's gone. See the chin? See that little ripply texture in the chin? It looks fantastic now. So when you see little, you know, the freckles, the stuff that's in that 10 pixel radius range, those are the things that this is going to soften away. Now, stay away from contrasting edges. Like let's say I'm doing these little like, you know, the, the bumps on the neck and they go, oh no, that looks terrible. Stay away from contrasting edges. Don't do like, you know, teeth. Don't do, you know, eyes because that looks creepy. But the skin areas, like the things there, the things over there. Don't do everything though. Like if you get, if you just go nuts, I'm just going to do the whole darn thing. Well, then you're kind of back into that kind of over softened sort of look. Um, so be selective. You say, oh, look at these little things up here. Let's just take those out. Let's just take those out. Restraint is kind of the key. And if you do a before and after, you can see it smoothed out the chin, smoothed out the forehead, while leaving that texture intact. And you can just kind of whack it into the areas where you think it could use it the most. But this is a nice, fast way of kind of getting rid of specific sizes of problems. Right.